work which is still widely being used today. Uh, this lecture will discuss how to prescribe warfarin in secondary care. A brief history of warfarin. Uh, during the 1920s, cattle in northern USA and Canada were dying from spontaneous bleeding mysteriously. On closer inspection, they were feeding on a sweet clover plant which contained a naturally occurring anticoagulant. This was then further developed into warfarin which was initially approved as a rodenticide in 1952 before being approved for human use two years later. The name warfarin comes from WARF, Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation, and ARIN from Coumarin. How does warfarin do its job? It functions as a vitamin K antagonist. Vitamin K is required for the gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residues via epoxide reductase in coagulation factors 2, 7, 9, 10, and also protein C and S. Preventing the activation of these factors results in an increase in the INR and PT. A point to note is that protein C and S function as anticoagulants. However, warfarin also inhibits these. In the short term, therefore, there is an increased coagulability with warfarin until the suppression of the coagulation factors 2, 7, 9 and 10 catches up and exceeds the increased coagul coagulable state resulting from the suppression of protein C and S. Until that time is reached, it is important to provide additional anticoagulation with low molecular weight heparin until the target INR can be reached. So all this discussion about INR, what exactly is INR? This stands for the International Normalized Ratio. In a normal healthy individual, this weighs in to 1. The INR was developed because there were discrepancies between different laboratories when it came to processing the prothrombin time of a patient. It allows the comparison of the clotting state of a individual internationally. Indications for warfarin Atrial fibrillation, very important indication. The tendency to develop clots due to stasis in atrial fibrillation warrants anticoagulative treatment. It's recommended in proximal, persistent and permanent AF, as well as being an indication three weeks prior to and three weeks after uh, cardioversion therapy. The target INR is usually 2.5 and warfarin is also indicated for is ischemic stroke in AF, peripheral arterial disease in AF, and valvular diseases with previous emboli of AF. Most targets for most targets with warfarin, warfarin with the INR are 2.5. However, the presence of a mechanical mitral valve leads to the target being. 3.5. This is higher than normal due to the position of the mitral valve as flow rates are slower as compared to the aortic position as well as the tendency of the blood to clot when in contact with non-organic matter. Warfarin is also indicated for DVT. Isolated DVT in a non-surgical patient with no risk factors has an target INR of 2.5 for 3 months. DVT post -surgical for post-surgical patients with no risk factors has the same INR of 2.5, but for a shorter duration of 6 weeks. In the instance of recurrent DVT or PE, when the patient is already on warfarin, we boost up the target INR to 3.5. Interactions of warfarin. Warfarin is metabolized by the cytochrome P450 system and therefore enzyme, enzyme inhibitors of this system increase the effects of warfarin. A mnemonic to remember this is AO 
devices. Allopurinol or meprazole, disulfiram, erythromycin or clavifomycin, sodium valproate, isoniazid, cimetidine, ciprofloxacin, ethanol and sulf sulfonamides. Drugs that induce the P450 system and therefore decrease the effects of warfarin are the PC brass. Phenatoin, carbamazepine, barbiturates, rifampicin, alcohol, and sulfonylureas. Sorry about that. Warfarin is contraindicated in certain situations such as 48 hours postpartum in hemorrhagic stroke and in significant bleeding. It is cautioned in bacterial endocarditis, any condition that sees a, a bleeding risk increase, a history of a GI bleed, hyper and hypothyroidism, peptic ulcer disease, recent ischemic stroke, recent surgery and uncontrolled hypertension. Warfarin is also contraindicated in pregnancy due to tetrogenic effects, however is safe for breastfeeding. Avoid in hepatic and renal impairment. So, the side effects of warfarin, the most important being bleeding, includes alopecia, diarrhea, hepatic dysfunction, jaundice, nausea, pancreatitis, purpura, pyrexia, rash, skin necrosis, vomiting, and purple toe syndrome, of which we have a picture on the right hand side. So here is a checklist for prescribing warfarin in a hospitalized patient. So we have to carry out a full history of the patient, taking into account history of liver disease, renal impairment, pregnancy, and other important conditions which may affect medication administration. With elderly patients, assessed fall risk. These falls can provoke hemorrhage. Assess compliance to the drug. Will the patient cooperate with regular bloods and checkups? Check their medication list and ensure that they have been counseled on warfarin. This is especially important. Then we can go ahead and follow the hospital protocol for initiation of warfarin. One such protocol is named the Fenerty protocol. Here is an example of an age-adjusted Fenerty protocol and it gives us guidance on target INRs and when to check the INRs. The warfarin counselling continued. We have to ensure that the patient has a yellow booklet. It's quite readily available. Um, warfarin should be taken at the same time every day, 6 p.m. Patients should be advised not to take additional tablets to make up for missed doses, but rather to inform the doctor of any missed doses. Fully explain the risks and side effects of warfarin. Diet-wise, high vitamin K food sources should be avoided as well as cranberry juice. Avoid alcohol where possible. It increases the INR. If patients do take alcohol, they should drink the same amount every day, no more than two units, to prevent fluctuation in the INR. Intramuscular injections should be avoided due to the risk of bleed, as well as um, prescribing warfarin in preg pregnancy. Common drugs to avoid when on warfarin, unless otherwise indicated, include aspirin, antifungals, analgesics, NSAIDs, and true feeds which contain vitamin K. Keep in mind the enzyme inducers and the enzyme inhibitors. For this presentation, here are the references that have been used. Thank you again for watching. Um, a follow up lecture addressing how to tackle bleeds in warfarin patients 
is planned to be released quite shortly. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you again for watching.